Although the wildlife park's non-human residents aren't aware of the current health crisis affecting the world, they will probably have noticed some changes to their daily lives. <laughs> as well as missing visitors since the park closed to the public, they may also have wondered why their keepers are wearing strange new items, as question marks remain over whether COVID-19 can transmit to animals. We do wear PPE uh, when we go into pretty much all of the uh, enclosures. We wear gloves. Uh, hand washing is a thing anyway for keepers. You're washing your hands constantly anyway. Um, so we're quite used to that kind of routine. Um, we have been wearing masks as well, especially if there's any risk. Um, we're not sure uh, the extent to which uh, this virus will affect other animals, uh, particularly primates, so uh, we are generally quite careful around, especially the macaques um, and ones more close to us. Um, but as a precautionary measure, if you're doing any work near to them, we would really bad in any way. And since lockdown started, you can hear birds in the street around the rock. What other positive effects has, has the lockdown had on nature in Gibraltar? Um, I think generally, I, I, I've heard that the pollution levels are going down around the world and I'd hope the same would be in Gibraltar as well. Um, I think that's going to be beneficial to nature and just the peace and the, the sort of reduction in, in traffic, for instance, you know, um, I'm cycling around, actually loving cycling around and not, not having to risk my life every day with the rush hour traffic. So um, things like that are uh, fantastic. I haven't been up the rock, so, but I have heard that they're all quite relaxed up there. We did have a couple of visitors the other day to the park, so uh, Barbary Macaques came down. Um, they just sat at the top. It was raining quite heavily. Uh, one of the staff sent me a video. So that was, it's been quite a while since they've come down. So I think they're a little bit intrigued as to what's going on. Um, and around the world, there have been some even more obvious and bigger changes. What lessons do you think we can take from these strange times? Um, I think long term, um, you know, it's something that, that we're kind of integrally involved in anyway, trying to get people to change their habits, uh, their habits for habitats uh, campaign that we set up last year. Um, it's now more relevant than ever. It's a good time for people to reflect on what they do. And, you know, we've shown that we're resilient. We've shown that we can change our habits drastically and cope and still you know maintain i'm seeing a lot of very positive uh, posts on facebook a, a lot of humor um we can do it so you know this is maybe a, a good time for us to reassess what we do on a daily basis and and, and make those changes now and, and keep it that way for the, for the good of the planet really so. what kind of changes are you referring to um just reducing you know uh, reducing your your use of your car um maybe just not consuming so much but I think actually a lot of people are consuming probably more <laughs> I know on our days off we do tend to eat a little bit more um, but yeah just reassessing how we view nature and how we treat it have a look around at what's happening now and appreciate that nature does need a break and we're part of nature and you know we're an integral part of that and we need nature as well and, and, and I think a lot of the the things that are happening on social media, people are really appreciating um, seeing nature um, because they miss it. And, you know, just understanding how important that is for our well-being. If you're missing nature, you can visit the Wildlife Park's website. Its Instagram page is also regularly updated with posts about what the animals are getting up to during lockdown.